Hey guys, it's GED question of the daytime. And look at that, it looks like some algebra. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. It says, evaluate the expression below for x equals seven, y equals eight, and z equals two. And here I see my algebraic expression, three xz minus five y plus one. Now, uh, I have to tell you that this is where a lot of students just throw up their hands. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. I could never do algebra. What nonsense. How am I supposed to deal with X's and Y's and Z's? And I'm like, guys, you don't have to deal with X's and Y's and Z's. You missed the point of this problem. Look back at your direction. Directions. It says evaluate the expression below for X equals 7. X is not a mystery. X is 7. Where you once saw X in the problem, you can put in a 7. Okay, so I write 7 right underneath X, right underneath. When I run a, write a new expression, I write it underneath. Um, and what I'm doing right now is I'm substituting in what I know. Now, I also know that Y is 8. So right underneath that Y, I'm going to put an 8. Okay, and I can see that Z is Two. So where I once had Z, I'm going to put a 2. Now we have to talk about this 7 and this 2, which are currently shoved up next to each other with nothing in between them. In math class, like we have here, do you see how these numbers 3, X, and Z, you say, Kate, those aren't numbers, those are letters. Yeah, they're letters because we don't know, we didn't know what they were yet. But they're the letters stand in for some number, some number we haven't named yet. Uh, we just name it in the next step. You can see it's 7 and 2. But anyway, when letters and numbers are shoved up together like this in math class, all tight with nothing in between them, they are multiplying. They are multiplying. And that is a new concept for some people in algebra to know that. But I joke that that should be real obvious to you guys. I mean, really. Because if you saw two people all shoved up next to each other with no space in between them, you'd be like, oh my land, they are multiplying. <laughs> the gossip would start, right? So same thing here. When we see numbers and letters shoved up together, these are multiplying. That means this is 3 times x times z. So what are this 7 and this 2 doing down here? They're multiplying. Now, we want to keep our 3 from up above, so I'm going to drop it. And I'm going to do it with a different color so you can see my dropping. So I'm going to drop my 3 from above. There's my new x. It's 7. My new z is 2. I want to drop my minus 5. There's my new y, it's 8, but remember, if those two things were shoved up against each other, they're multiplying, and there is my plus 1. So all the numbers and operands, we call them, the um, operation symbols that tell me what to do, I drop those, and then the letters I replace with numbers. And now, this is not an algebra problem anymore. This is just an arithmetic problem. It's just some order, uh, order of operations problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the implied math here. So I happen to know because of my order of operations that I would work groupings first, exponents next, multiplication and division third, and addition and subtraction last. Um, I ran out of room. I'm just going to write M for multiplication and division since hopefully what just happened? Since hopefully you guys know that multiplication and its inverse division are the same step. And then I'm going to write an A for addition and subtraction because hopefully you guys know that addition and subtraction are the same step, addition and its inverse. Okay, great. So there's no groupings here. I got nothing going on inside of parentheses, brackets, um, fractions, square roots, nothing going on on the inside. I have no exponents, no floating numbers, no radicals, but I sure do have some multiplication. Here's three numbers multiplying, here's two numbers multiplying. I'm going to start with that math. So 3 times 7 is 21. 21 times 2 is 42. 5 times 8 is 40. And now you need to drop down whatever you haven't used up. So I haven't used this minus here, so I'll drop the minus. And I haven't used the plus 1, so I'll drop the plus 1. And now all I have left to do is my addition subtraction. So 42 minus 40 is, of course, 2. And if I added 1 to that, I'd get 3. Uh, correct answer is three. And just FYI, if you are a lazy, lazy person, like I know my, a lot of my students are, you could have typed um, this entire expression, three times seven times two minus five times eight plus one, into your TI-30XS exactly the way it appears. And you know what? It would go straight to the answer of three. Um, your TI even has a 
parentheses open close so you can type it in exactly like that it is a wise investment to pick up one of those so you have practice with it before you take your GED. Okay, great. This is my uh, final answer here. I hope that it makes sense to you. If it doesn't, I would love to hear from you in the comments because we want to make sure that we're clear for everybody. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next question.